Hey, Jermaine Griggs here, and welcome to another edition of Theory Talk. Now, in this particular discussion, we're going to talk about why the number system is so important to ear musicians. Okay, now, coming from other worlds, the number system is probably not stressed as much, especially if you're reading sheet music. Um, in fact, many people can read sheet music note for note, very good sight readers, but um, are weak in the music theory arena, so they can't tell you many of the core that they are playing because they're playing I'm sure enough right off of the music they know where to put their fingers and they they know all the rhythms but they can't take a step back and without that sheet music play basically what they just played reading so as an ear musician you're on the other side of the fence uh, it is imperative that you understand what you're doing now many people when they first get started especially in certain genres they get away with being able to just play they picked up something they memorized something a friend showed them something and they can get away with just kind of playing sounding good but um, they find their limits when it comes time to learn songs on their own or take songs to new keys uh, like very quickly without um, you know much work uh, you know being able to improvise being able to communicate to other musicians that know what they're doing uh, this is where they find um, uh, they get frustrated because they don't really understand the number system and the number system is so simple you know once you got it you got it so in this video I thought I'd really stress it okay many of you understand the number system um, you understand how to number your scale um, you know it's not hard if you know your C major scale as C D E F G A B C so you know it as all these white notes you simply number it it's nothing to it right C is 1 D is 2 E is 3 F is 4 G is 5 A is 6 and B is 7 okay so you literally do this with all of the major scales there are 12 major scales don't ask me to do the math but there's seven numbers per scale now yeah we can say flat two and flat three for these black notes here we can say flat five uh, we can say flat six and we can say flat seven but those typically come easier once you understand the numbers cuz hey if I know the second tone of the scale is D it's not hard to say D flat because you're always flatting the letter. You're never going to get a, if you're going to flat D, you're going to get D flat. It's impossible to flat D and get C sharp. So all you really got to do is add flat to the back of whatever the number is. So really focus on that. And I'm going to give you seven reasons why the number system is so important. And hopefully that'll fuel you uh, to really get it done. Um, there's a site that I put up here in play.com forward slash numbers okay so just put in our site and then write numbers okay um, just spell it out when you go to here and play.com slash numbers um, it'll transfer you to a page like this it's a 28 page document that I put out not too long ago and uh, not only does it have all your scales listed here notice the scale and then the numbers how how great right F major BAM B flat major E flat A flat you got all your scales here and you have all the numbers so I would definitely print that out and then I took it upon myself to make you flashcards because um, you know whenever I had to learn something like this back in my day uh, in college and stuff uh, I would do flashcards and I found that they were very effective for me now maybe not everybody can do flashcards but it's worth a try okay and basically on one side it says first tone of C okay first tone of B flat first tone of A flat so these are the first tone cards if you flip it over you got the answer okay the answer is flipped so notice C is on this side because when you print on it it's opposite the mirror effect but I put the number here so you always know that this is the answer for flashcard one this is the question for flashcard one so just follow the directions and make these flashcards cut them out staple them to each other or glue them to each other or if you're advanced print on the other side of the paper and now you have yourself I believe like 96 flashcards if, if my math is correct uh, uh, 87 according to this okay so 87 flashcards covering all the tones and you just sit there every day and you just quiz yourself third tone of F A you know you just need to know that kind of stuff um, and I'll give you the reasons why you need to know that stuff in a second okay so seven reasons um, 
you need to understand numbers. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to use an old school way. I've, I've typed these out in Notepad, but I'm just going to reveal them to you one by one. Okay, so look down here. Reason number one, it is the official universal language of the ear musician. You got that? Okay, understanding numbers. It's the universal language of the ear musician. Okay, just think about it. Um, you hear musicians all the time. Hey, go to the one. Now we're going to go off the four. We're going to do this. We're going to flip it off the two. Now go to the two and then the five. Now, if you don't know the numbers, you can't join in in the conversation, which we'll talk more in depth about this a little later. But um, you can't join in on, in the conversation. You read blog posts and, and people are referencing the number system. Other people call it the Roma, Roman numeral system. OK, so they, they may do like a big I and then they might do, you know, two little eyes. I mean, same same thing for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, I like the number system. Most of us, we know our numbers. Some of us get a little choked up on the Roman numeral system because it uses V's and I's and stuff like that. So I prefer just one through seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you got that down, you're good to go. Okay. Um, and everything about music comes down to the numbers. I mean, everything. Um, every tone of the scale, for example, has a name. You know, uh, the first tone of the scale is, is what we call the tonic. OK, but the literal definition of that is, you know, first tone of the scale. So, yeah, we can call it something fancy. Uh, this is called the tonic. OK, second tone of the scale is called the super tonic. But that literally means second tone. I mean, you know, it, it, um, it every tone of the scale has uh, a function, has a name. Uh, but it comes back down to, well, if you don't know what the second tone of the scale is, none of that stuff matters. Okay, so when you get into saying uh, the dominant tone of the scale or or, or the um, super tonic or the median or the, you know, you get into this fancy language. Even when you get into modes, okay, on my blog, you can research modes. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. Well, those literally mean, you know. Uh, tones of scale starting on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth tone of the scale. So it's like everything. I don't mean to teach you about modes and scale degrees. That's not what this lesson is about. But I say that to say like everything deduces down to knowing your numbers. And it's not even knowing your numbers, but it's like really having them memorized so that you know them fast. Like when I say go to the fourth tone of F, you should say B flat very quickly. Seventh tone of A flat, G, right? Second tone of E flat, F. Third tone of D flat, F. Fifth tone of D flat, A flat. Fifth tone of G, D. You know, you should have them that fast. Um, for learning purposes, you're, you're here, you know, in, 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 in the club and we're doing a lesson and we're like, hey, this is a six, two, five, one in the key of D. Who wants to have to stop, figure out six, two, five, one in the key of D? Right. It would be great if you already knew that was B going to E, going to A, going to D. Right. So even for keeping up, you know, it's like the absolute foundation of what you should know. You don't have to be able to play a lick. Uh, but if you understand the number system, it, it will move you so much further along than somebody still having to um, like look them up or, or, or it doesn't come as fast as it should. You know, many people, for example, my daughter, she knows her ABCs now, but, um, you know, a couple years ago, it was like, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And then if I stop her, I'm like, OK, and then come back. You know, it's, it's hard for some people to start something in the middle. They have to, like, start all over just to get up to that point. Right. Or if I told you, you know, what's the 11 tone of the alphabet? You probably have to start from the beginning and start counting. OK. Now, in music, you want to be the opposite. You want to know everything separate from each other. You don't want to have to go back to your memory and think about the C major scale, count up to the fifth tone, and then finally say G. You want to know every tone separate from each other. And that's why I did the flashcards. That's why I think the flashcards are great, because when you're quizzing yourself, you're quizzing yourself on every tone individually. You're not having to rely on playing the C major scale to know, oh, now I know it's the sixth tone. No, you want to know the sixth tone independent of any other tone. You don't want to have to play the scale to get to the sixth tone and finally know the answer. You just want to know six tone of C, A, right? Six tone of F, D, six tone of A flat, F, six tone of G flat, E flat. Bam, it should just come to you, okay? Because 
Indeed, it is the universal language. Reason number two, many shortcuts can be executed by understanding the number system. I'll just give you a few right here, um, and they're all throughout our musician transformation program. But for example, a lot of people know that you can play a minor scale, okay? A lot of people are scared of the um, minor scales but they know their major scales but they don't know that one little trick can allow them to play their minor scales for example here's a C major scale right C D O E F excuse my writing on this mouse today <laughs> G A B C and for the purposes of this exercise you're gonna have to bear with me as I go up a second octave so C D E F G A B. Now here's the thing. This is the C major scale from this C to C. I extended another octave as well. Now, most people don't know that to play a minor scale, minor scales are basically major scales with different reference points, okay? There's nothing different about minor scales than major scales. You don't even have to learn a new formula, you know? Some of you guys know the why won't he wear white when hot method that I came out with many years ago, which is just a whole step, half steps. Just take the first letter of each of those words, why won't he wear white when hot, and you get a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, right? Um, in this, you know, you don't even have to do that for the minor scales. I know some teachers teach it like that, and I'm like, why? What is the point? Because... The minor is found in the major. So the magic um, number is six. Basically, if you want to know what is, if you're in a major key like C major and you want to know what is the relative minor of the key that you're in, go to the sixth tone. Okay? And the sixth tone, really, it's easier to find it backwards than going way up here. So it's A. Sixth tone is A. Okay? A is the relative minor of C, and C is the relative major of A. Let's just think of them literally as relatives. They live in, let's just say they live in the same house, they share the same food, they share the same housing, they share the same street, they share everything. A minor has the same notes in it as C major. Uh, they have the same number of sharps and flats. In this case, no sharps, no flats in the key of C major. That's why A minor is all white keys. C major is all white keys. If you want to play a minor scale, you can literally play the notes of C major starting and ending on A. That's why I never tell anyone to learn minor scales independently. Um, or not. I never tell people to think of minor scales separately. Find out whatever the relative major is. You'll know that if you know your numbers. If you can... Go to the sixth tone of any key really quickly, like bam, like we were talking about earlier, and you can literally play the notes of the major scale that it relates to, play the notes of that major scale, starting and ending on the sixth tone. Bam, you have yourself a minor scale. You wouldn't be able to do that, though, if you weren't on your feet quick about what is the sixth tone of, of whatever key I'm in. Okay, another example. Um, many people know that uh, you can play major nine chords. By combining two small major chords. What are those major chords? The one and the five. So if I'm in a key of C major, what is the one? Now you need to be quick, C major. Okay, now what is the major chord on C major? Well, it's C, E, G, right? Everybody knows the C major chord. Okay, and if you don't, you know, go to the uh, fundamental factory or in the chord county area. So that's the one. That's the major chord on the one, because the one is C, and the major chord on C is C major, and that's C E G. Okay. Now, what is the five of the key? Happens to be G. Okay. So we circle G. Now, what is G major? Because we need a major chord on the five as well. It's G B D. Okay. So now everybody running around, I don't know how to play nine chords. How do I play major nine chords? Well, do you know how to play major chords? Yeah. They, they'll say, yeah. Okay. Do you know how to play um, regular major chords? Yeah. Do you know how to number your scale? I don't know, Doc. <laughs> See, that's the key. That's why numbers are so important because if you know the one and five of any key and you know the major chords that, that fall on those tones, bam, combine them together either with your left and right hand or all together because um, you don't have to play the G twice. The G is common, you know, so basically just mesh them together and you have yourself a major nine. Now, what if I told you all chords are like that? The minor nine is the same way. You just take C, E flat G, okay, because the um, minor um, chords have flat three in them, 
uh, but then the G major is now G minor, okay? So basically, the C minor 9 is the opposite. It's the 1 minor plus 5 minor. Okay, now by the way, all these formulas um, we talk about in chord county. Okay, so you might want to check that out. But the point here is that many shortcuts can be executed by understanding the number system. So far, in just a couple minutes, um, we've learned how to play our minor scales by simply knowing our major scales. We went from the sixth to the sixth tone. Um, then we took it a step further. We know how to play major nine chords by combining a major chord on the one plus a major chord on the five. I showed you that. We know, and I wasn't even expecting to show you the minor nine, but it was so easy to create that because all we do is it's the same concept, but we play minor chords on each of those. Now, all extended chords have those same uh, kind of formulas, okay? In fact, I call it the um, Fantastic Four, meaning if you know your major chords, your minor chords, your diminished chords, and your augmented chords, or maybe I'll put a big Basically, these little three-finger chords, these are like your Fantastic Four. You combine those with little formulas that we cover in chord county, and the number system, because you obviously have to know a number system, every chord known, every tertian chord at least, and that's vast, there's dozens and dozens and dozens you'll have under your belt. So that should be your focus. Okay, number three. You can play any chord using numbers, okay? We kind of, I talked a little bit about that when I covered the shortcuts, but even if you didn't stack chords, okay, the that prior technique was more about superimposing chords over each other, stacking chords, uh, that kind of thing. But even if you went for the chords separately, okay, another way to look at the major nine is one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine now after doing our last exercise we know you know this is simply C major plus G major but even if you took this route gotta know the numbers very simply this is the first tone of the scale this is the third this E here this G is the fifth this B is the seventh and this D here is the nine okay so without knowing your numbers, and now let's talk a little bit about extensions, okay? Basically, the 9 is the same as the 2. So I don't even think of 9 separately. I've just memorized, so it's been so long that I know basically the 2 is the 9. It's just up an octave. So the 2 is down here, but, it, I mean, D is D. We're not reading sheet music, so it's not important that it's down here versus up here. As long as you use what you know about your numbers to get this 9 here, then you're good to go. So 2 is 9, and, and in that case, 11 is the fourth tone of the scale. So these go together. So this F up here is really the same as this 4 down here, and then 13 is 6. So really, there's nothing scary about extended chords, like 9s, 11s, and 13s, if you think of them as 2, 4, and 6. Okay. So basically, that's the third reason. Reason number four, you can understand patterns with numbers. Okay, Everything that we do here in the club, um, we connect to a pattern. So, you know, you've probably seen 251, or you've probably seen 6251, okay? Or you might have seen 1-4 turnaround. See, these numbers come straight from the scale. Now, without a major scale, these numbers are just numbers, ideas. But as soon as you bring these numbers into a key, like as soon as we say, okay, we're going to be in C major, now what happens? Well, what is the second tone of, of C? It's D, okay? And D is going to be progressing to whatever the fifth tone is. It's G. And then this G is going to be progressing to whatever the first tone is, which is C. So basically what a 251 is, is a chord off the second tone of the scale, going to a chord off the fifth, going to a chord off the one. As simple as that. Uh, a 6251 just takes it a step further. We just put an A in here, which is the sixth tone. So we go from A to D, and then D to G, and then G to C. 1-4 is just from C to F. Okay. 
And I'm telling you, many people that haven't gotten this idea of patterns yet and they're thinking of every song as separate, it's probably because of a failure to really get the number system down in your blood. Because if you've learned five songs in the club so far and you've understood them as you're playing these chords, you're thinking about numbers when you're on C. You're thinking, okay, I'm on the one. And then you go to D minor. Now you're like, I'm on the two. And then you go to G7 or G dominant. Now you're like, I'm on the five. You're not saying it out loud verbally, but you're thinking about it. You're conscious of it. Okay, now when the next song comes along, chances are you're going to do that. Because like two five ones are in every song. So chances are you're going to do something very similar to that. It may be in another key. So it may throw you off. It may not be a D chord going to some kind of G chord going to C. It may be an F chord going to some kind of B flat chord going to E flat. But because numbers are universal and they allow us to relate everything together in this one universal language, you still know that's a 2-5-1. The F to B flat to E flat doesn't throw you off just because it's not D to G to C. So you have to move everything out of their you know, specific keys and you got to bring them to this universal language because at some point everything follows the same patterns. I mean, everything is deduced down to like a couple dozen patterns that are just everywhere. They're over and over and over and over. And so once you put everything with numbers, then the patterns are very easy because you start seeing that I'm not doing anything different in this song. I'm doing the same thing in this song as the last song I learned. Because we brought everything to one language. Imagine the world if we all spoke the same language. We can go anywhere. Now, I'm not advocating that, but that's pretty much the power of um, numbers. Okay? And then you understand everything you're doing a lot easier because you understand that, uh, hey, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just in different parts of the world, but everybody's the same. So that's reason number four. Okay. Reason number five, you can communicate in the band situation easier. I kind of talked about this one already, but pretty much um, you may be in situations where um, somebody, like you're doing a 2-5-1, and then the bass player might say, if they're the music director, they may say, go to the flat seven. See, when it comes to substitutions, now, of course, you have band rehearsals, but some bands you know, like to be more spontaneous. Other bands don't have rehearsals, so it's just whatever's done. Okay, and oftentimes, if, if everybody's privy to numbers, and most are, and, and when you get to getting paid to do what you do, and, and you get to that professional level, so they may be like flat seven, and, and everybody knows, like, without thinking about it, to go to flat seven and then because they understand patterns they've been to the flat seven before they know the chords most likely to be played there probably a major chord or a suspended chord okay and that could be done just a few seconds before we all do it in the band go to the two okay go to the flat five we're gonna go to flat five before the two or okay some of you guys might not believe that stuff is that spontaneous and it is but what about before what about in a rehearsal when people are concocting these different flips, if you will, you got to guys have seen JP flip songs. That's what flip means, right? It's the cool way to say, do something different than what the song does, but it still works. Okay. Let's be cool. So they may say, let's flip this. Let's do this. And if you're having to look up the numbers or you're just don't understand the numbers as fast as you should, um, obviously that's going to be a problem. So even communicating at a professional level, the numbers, are, you know, just knowing chords is not enough. You gotta, you gotta know that, uh, that universal language. Reason number six, you can transpose things to other keys a lot quicker. Okay. And this kind of, um, is what I was talking about earlier about, hey, you could be playing the same 2-5-1 in different keys and not even know it, that they're the same thing because you're blinded by the new key you're in, which has new notes, feels different to your fingers and all that. But the minute you put numbers to everything or at least be cognizant of the numbers, now you've already played 2 5 ones in every key as you've learned more and more songs in different keys. So it's not that you don't even know the 2 5 ones. It's just knowing that, hey, I can play, I can take this song that I'm playing here in E flat major and I can immediately move it to A flat major because if I'm doing a 2 5 one and I happen to be using maybe a minor chord on the two, 
maybe a, um, a dominant 11 chord on the five and maybe like a major seven on the one. Well, if I know my what a two, five, one is in the key of A flat, if I know the two, which is B flat, can I easily put a minor chord on B flat? Yep, because I know my minor chords. Can I put a, a dominant 11 on E flat, which is the fifth tone in A flat? Yeah, I can do that right away. And do I know my major chords? Of course. So on A flat, I can pretty much do the same thing in A flat without having to move fingers up, without having to count half steps, which is a way to transpose. You can just count up how many ever notes you need to get to A flat. But um, you don't even have to do that if you understand the numbers because you know that you're on the second tone of the scale. So can I just go to a new key right now and hop on the second tone of the scale? Yeah, because everything's relative. Okay, so I can pull things out of the key that I'm in, go to a new key, and just follow the same number pattern in that new key, if it makes sense. Okay, and number seven. You can hear numbers, okay, when listening to a song in the car, which is easier than hearing absolute tones because, truth be told, that's perfect pitch. Only one in 10,000 people can naturally do that, okay? But it's a lot easier to hear numbers, okay? So when I'm listening to a song in the car, I'm hearing like, okay, I'm hearing a six. I'm hearing a two. I'm hearing a five. I'm hearing a one, okay? Okay. I'm not hearing letters because I'm not one of those one in 10,000 people that can hear the letters. Um, some people can learn it, can figure it out through particular ear training programs. And we have pitch. Pitch can help you out. You guys have access to it if, if you're here in the club. Okay. Um, but for the most part, playing by ear is all about relative pitch. You, you don't need perfect pitch. I'm not just saying that. Okay. You don't. It's all about relative and if you hear the numbers in your head, okay, once you get to the piano, you can figure out the key by, you know, doing some hum techniques that I cover in, in videos online. But um, it's all about hearing the numbers. If you've played 251 so much in your own practice, at some point, you should be able to know how 251 sound. It doesn't matter if you're in B flat, E flat, F, A flat. You should know how 251 sound. At some point, the ear should unlock, click, and bam. Because you've played it so many times that, hey, you know how to listen for it. So when you're in your car, eventually the numbers just start calling out at you. You hear a two, you hear a five. It's this visceral, intuitive thing. And then once you get to your piano, yes, you have to connect the dots by saying, okay, I was hearing a two, I was hearing a five, I was hearing a one. Now you need to put it into a particular world because numbers are universal. You still need to go, you know so to speak, to a particular country, you know, to take use of it. You got to be somewhere, okay, not in outer space. Numbers are kind of like being in this universal outer space. So now, once we're hearing the numbers, we may be hearing a 736 progression in our head. We got to bring that to whatever key that song is in. So we, we may figure once we get to our piano that it's the key of C. Okay, well, now those numbers make sense. 736 is some kind of B chord going to some kind of E going to some kind of A. Okay, in the key of C. So that's basically what I want to cover today. Um, so what can you do today? You can go to hearandplay.com mm -hmm. forward slash numbers. Okay, right here. Pick up these cards and work on the number system. That's it. And if, if you can truly say to me, or we can get on the phone and I can quiz you. I can be like, what's the third tone of G? And you can be like, B, without hesitation. You got it. I think these seven things that we talked about today will come absolutely uh, quick to you. And um, I think your playing uh, will definitely be changed. So that's what this video is about. You have it all in your hands now. Now you take action on it. So I'm Jermaine Griggs. I'll see you in my next theory talk. And as always, remember, if you can hear it, you can play it.